And there we go. It's pretty cool on Barksite. There's a lot of stuff that you could, uh, architecturally, that you could do with this flat wall here. So I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me how I find the locations that I do in Dwarf Fortress for my embarks. Um, a lot with the, the tall mountains and waterfalls and those types of things. So I thought that I would make just a real quick uh, video tutorial on how to find um, uh, some pretty cool uh, embark sites. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is um, download the new pack. I'll include a link uh, below. There's multiple third-party software that we're going to be using for this. Um, specifically, we're going to be, if you go into utilities, we're going to be looking at uh, Armok Vision. Uh, we're going to be using ISO World. And we're going to be using the Legends Viewer. Um, along with, of course, we're going to be using DF Hack and the regular program Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress. So the first thing that you want to do is um, start Dwarf Fortress and you are going to generate your world. Now I have already generated a world and um, if you guys like what you see on the maps um, I can give you the parameters for the type of map that it creates. I like maps that have a lot of mountains, uh, steep mountains. So. Um, the, the very first thing, yeah, so we're going to generate our world, and then after you generate the world, the next part is you have to export the world. So to export it so that the third-party programs can look at it, uh, you're going to click on Start Playing, and you're going to go to Legends. Now, as soon as Legends is done loading up, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to uh, the DF Hack, which if you started Dwarf Fortress from the, um, from the uh, new pack, then DF Hack should automatically start up with Dwarf Fortress when you start it. Uh, now from inside of um, the Legends window, as long as this is open, now you can type in the scripts into DF Hack that pertain to the Legends. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to type in the code export legends space info and uh, it's going to take in a minute and what that's going to do for us is uh, that is going to be exporting all of the history civilizations the sites um, any of the characters that are in there and uh, it uh, will uh, put it into a format where we can then read it using the uh, legends viewer so I will come back whenever that is done. All right, looks like Legends is done exporting. So now the second thing that we're going to do is now we need to export the maps out of Legends. So we're going to do Port Legends Maps. You'll see in the background that uh, All right, so now it's done exporting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the new pack and we are going to open up our Legends Viewer. 
All right. So what uh, what we're gonna do is we need to load in the legends file. So it's automatically pointing to where it was, but what you're gonna do is wherever your Dwarf Fortress file is, whenever you export your legends, it will create a new folder that will have all of your legends documents inside of it. So if you open it up, you can see that it created these two files here. You're going to do the legends plus file. We're gonna say open, and so now that is loading. As that's loading, I'm gonna go back well, now I'm going to do one thing at a time to keep it simple. Alright, so here's our world. Now when I choose an Embark site, I like to personally, uh, I, I like to choose sites that have um, all of the major races, the, the goblins, the humans, the dwarves, and the elves. Um, all together uh, because I like to do trading with with all of them and it makes me feel like when I'm playing the game it makes me feel like I'm connected to a bigger world when they come in to do trading or when they attack so um, yep from here you can see the different civilizations that we have and what their populations are uh, who's fallen Some of the elves are pretty large, some of their civilizations are pretty small. Goblins, typically they're pretty large. I, I upgraded the number of demons in the world gen. Humans are always a hit or miss for me. It looks like this time around I have smaller human nations, but normally I have very large, up to even 10,000 humans. In one in one civilization but yes so it looks like this is a pretty well distributed world um, now I'm going to go into the world map and you can see that this looks very similar to what you see uh, inside of Dwarf Fortress when you go to embark um, let me see so one now what we're going to do is we are going to so that we can look at apples to apples when we're looking at ISO view we are going to load in the same map that ISO view is going to use. So I just clicked on this button over here, load alternate map, and you'll see that we're going to the same folder that came from that exporting um, where the, the legends folder or the legends uh, file was. And this is those maps that we exported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one here that says detail. And we're going to open that one. There we go. And so now you can see the Legends map has been converted to, um, to this terrain uh, looking map. It's a little easier to read than the text based map. We can still put on our sites and our civilizations so we can still kind of see uh, all the normal things that we could see but now it's just a little bit easier on this map here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the ISO world. So we're going to go back to the new pack. We're going to open up ISO World. There we go. Uh-oh, I already had it loaded. Um, what you're going to do when you very first start, it's not going to look like this. It will be blank. And you will go to that same map, the detail map. And you will click Open. And then what you do is once it's loaded, you'll click on this button here and you say Combined Biome and Elements. So now you can see by the mini map down here, this matches this map here. So once you find a good spot on here, you can take a 3D look at it on the ISO world. So that's what I that's what I like to do. Now I I've already found a couple cool places that we can check out, and I took some notes of where they are. Uh, these are the coordinates. You can see the coordinates are down here um, in the uh, Legends Viewer. So wherever you're putting your mouse is where the coordinates are. So um, here's one. It says 5126. 
So let's look for 5126. So here's 51. Okay, and the up is going to about 26. So right about right about here. Okay. And in my notes, what I wrote, it was lake cliffs, and there's all races, but they're mildly distant. So you can see it's right by um, some goblins, but close by we have dwarves up to the north. We have elves, a couple different elven civilizations. We have humans. We have more humans. So I think when we open up Dwarf Fortress, and we'll see, we may be able to do trading with all of the nations. Definitely we'll be able to fight with the goblins. Um, we'll have some sieges that come. So this might be a pretty interesting place. Now it looks like um, there's two places around here. There's a lake here with what looks like some cliffs. These gray it stands for mountains. And the lighter the gray, the lower the mountain. The white, or I'm sorry, the darker the gray, the lower the mountain. Oh, I, actually, it's the mountain type. So, like, this white area here, this is going to be a high peak. And then this area here, this is going to be a little bit lower. But with it being over a lake, which lakes are lower elevation, this is going to potentially be a steep cliff. So, um, let's go ahead, let's take a look at it in the ISO world view. All right, so here we are. Now in the ISO world, you can only see a little bit of time and you can't zoom out. So we have to depend completely on this mini map to kind of get us in the general area of where we need to be. Now it looks like we're already up in the north. I think it's a little bit over here. Oh, yep, here it is. Okay, so here's the two lake areas. So this here is where the goblin pit is. You can kind of see the purple. See when I get the screen close up, you can see where the purple is. So that's exactly where that goblin, uh, that goblin pit is. And then here's our lake and here are our steep cliffs. So that's basically what I do. I look at the legends viewer and I go around and I look for what could be potentially interesting locations. Like, for instance, um, this looks like it would be a very high mountain in, um, this is like a swamp kind of an area. Uh, so this would be extremely steep cliffs because you have the highest point of the mountain right next to what is a regular biome. If it had any elevation, it would be a mountain biome. So that's telling me that there's some very steep cliffs. If we go into ISO World to take a look at it, um, we know that it's over this way, and yes, here it is right here. Here's the very high, and here's the very low. So this is going to be very steep cliffs. This is almost a straight-up cliff. And that, that's going to be a pretty cool-looking one to, to look at as well. So now if I hit D uh, on here, you can see that it pulled up a, um, a, like a selector kind of area, so I can see whatever tile that I'm on, and I can see the attributes of that tile. So we're looking at what the height is and what the biome is. So the, the standard height is around 100 and looks like 140-ish is the general height. So and that, I think in Dwarf Fortress, that tells you actually the exact number of Z levels. So this is um, Z level uh, 149, which whenever you start the map, it would be zero. But then if you look over, as soon as we go into this white, area now it's 270 so that difference is the number of z levels of how tall this mountain is and how tall those cliffs are going to be when you go into the embark so let's um, take a look over here at the at these cliffs here so the beach is at 99 and then it looks like the uh, mountain is 150 so you're going to have about 50 Z levels tall uh, cliff face over here by this beach. Now I don't know if we're going to be able to embark over here because to embark you do have to have um, access to the area. I don't know if the beach is going to, in the game, allow us to have access or not. Um, and you can always use the embark anywhere dwarf uh, DF code, uh, DF hack code, 
but if you do and it's not a regular embark site i do not believe and i may be wrong but i do not believe that you can have caravans uh, or sieges so let's go ahead let's hop into um, dwarf fortress and let's pick up the location let's start it up and then let's look at it with uh, armok vision Okay, so here's the map. This is the, um, the Embark map that we are all used to seeing. And so now what we have to do is now that we kind of know the location of, of where we are and what we, what we want to embark on, I'm going to try to embark right here and look at um, the beach with this cliff face. I think that would be a pretty cool spot. So now what we do is we go over and we look at it on this map here. Okay, so we know that this is the exact spot right here. So now you click on this toggle alternate map inside of the view and it lets you go back and forth and see the difference. So actually it looks like this here is a volcano. So there's a volcano somewhere within these, these rocks. Pretty cool. Hopefully that would be kind of cool if there's a volcano right where we start off. So it looks like the second tile or the first tile of that. Yeah, right about right, right about there. So what we're going to do is we are going to find that spot in here. So it's at the north of this water base right here, right by a volcano. Okay. All right, so right about there. So now we can see on this mini map here, we can kind of see the area. It does not look like we are going to be able to embark here. Yeah, see the embark is grayed out. So that means that there's no access to the area. So let's go over one. Nope. Now it will let us over here. Right about there. So I think because of this, It's allowing us. Now if we look, we have dwarves, goblins, humans, and elves. By pressing tab, I was able to go and switch and look over at that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this area um, a little bigger. There we go. Now if we look at the elevation, you can see that this is the high, this is the low, and it's straight water, and then it's straight high up here. So we should be in pretty good location. This here shows us how extreme the cliffs are. So you can see that it's flat right about in here, twos and threes, zero. And then right here, it goes to extreme cliffs right in this area. So that should be a pretty good site. 
Now it looks like we're getting mainly a lot of beach here with not a lot of water. Now if I go over I lose one embark spot. I probably wouldn't play on one this big, um, but just for showing you guys, I'll go ahead and, and make it a little bit bigger just so we can kind of see what this all looks like. Now, I'm not actually going to be um, embarking on this one. This isn't my real embark. I would normally do a whole setup, but um, for doing just scouting and looking around to see what the place looks like. Um, this is this is exactly how I would do it. So let's see. Yes, these are very steep cliffs. And then it plateaus at the top here. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now let's go, let's open up Armok Vision and take a look and see how it looks inside of that. When I open up Armok Vision, I normally close out the other guys. So it's not loaded yet, but you can kind of see a little bit of how it would look. So this is the, the water from the lake. So kind of get an idea about how big the lake is. It's a pretty big lake. And these are those cliffs, and these are the beaches. So you can kind of start to put two and two together. To see what it is that we're looking at. Now let's look over here and see is anything loaded yet? Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, those are some pretty cool cliffs. Wow, and some really tall trees. So this is all forest, all this way out here. And that's more of the lake.
And there we go. It's pretty cool on Barksite. There's a lot of stuff that you could, uh, architecturally, that you could do with this flat wall here. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet site. Alright, thanks guys. Appreciate it.